Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13. Things or sounds did good, and I'm taking a bit of a side trip here. I was in the middle of putting together, which I'm hoping is going to be more concise than usual, a set of tutorials, video, popcorn JS, some Khan Academy quizzing, the like, um, tying together the high order math of quaternion rotation, which is robots and satellites, with some of the basic skills of learning uh, radicals, square root of 2, square root of 3, uh, and something called the lattice method. But in the middle of that, I had stumbled across someone, a uh, Khan Academy volunteer, who talked about how to use smooth draw and use some kind of, gave a little bit better of an explanation on how to use it. And I'm getting more and more impressed with smooth draw products, so I thought I'd go through with what I'm doing with it um, and share a, a some of the things one could do and what could the community of uh, creators could share out there because I think realistically it's awfully good. I, I Smooth Draw, um, it's not Photoshop, but it's not Photoshop. SketchUp is not AutoCAD, but it's not AutoCAD. And so uh, those two programs keep a certain simplicity that you see in really good interfaces. So what I've got in front of you is for a, uh, is a um, the, the whole screen or the whole window that has to do with smooth draw and I'm going to talk about uh, some of the concepts that we that it has and, and some of the things it doesn't have and I don't know if one can write a plugin for this but just to be able to draw a straight line in this thing would be just a huge um, a huge positive though with any decent uh, Wacom tablet you can use straight edges on top so for as example I'm going to do this right now you can go across right now on my Wacom I've used a straight edge and actually, let's see, I've used a straight edge and I'm drawing there right now. Let's see, I'm drawing a straight line with a straight edge. So there is value in that. I'm going to hit undo here in a second. Edit, undo, so, and edit, undo. So it does remember um, a fair bit of what you're doing. So what, what I want to point out is a Wacom tablet at 80 bucks. Uh, or something like that, it's pressure sensitive, definitely worth getting. This allows you to do that. Um, it allows layering and importing and exporting of layers. Uh, and besides all the typical pen tools, and it's got some pretty neat ones up here, it allows what it really does over what a lot of people use is it allows these layers. So what I'm going to talk about right now is, um, you know, using typically some nice templates behind what you have, and how you can control them um, uh, so you can actually capture your videos and then potentially have some some product that you can push out to web pages and, and the like so um, what I've got here is actually a drawing and I'm going to go back and first start out with the basics that Salcon typically uses a black background and then some yellow I guess it's called con yellow um, I would tell you when I do the capturing up to YouTube, I capture it 1280 by 720. That seems to work good. And mostly I'm just working on the content so that I'm actually just capturing the space that is the, um, the drawing space, if you, if you call it, or the canvas. Uh, depending on what size you're going to put these videos out into, the, the most important thing that appears on YouTube is that your aspect ratio is right. So up till now 1280 by 720 worked good all around but as I look at programs like Memrise which is really a good one for learning basics uh, uh, learning facts factual memory looks like it's got a really cool slick interface uh, I see that maybe I'm gonna have to learn to catch a capture at a different size 1280 by 720 works for me and then what I'm going to show here is just this layering concept so right now I've got a bunch of layers in my drawing right I've added them solely. So what I did with this one, I made a layer, layer one, and I do that right here by layer, add new layer, right? And I just added right in space, right? And I can actually also um, delete current layer, and then I can merge down. There's a lot of stuff you can do with layering. I will actually um, do a video separate on that, but I want to show that I brought in, I imported on this layer a, a drawing, which I had made and I'm going to bring up now SketchUp, which I had made in SketchUp. And I, you know, the reality is what SketchUp is about is so huge, I don't want to explain too much. It's really a 3D engine. However, it does allow you to do good 2D work. So what I, if I turn on SketchUp here, I turn on the axes, you're going to realize that this thing, I drew that 
um, at 1280 by 720 inches and hope to pixelate it down to 1280 by 720. However, controlling the view export, etc., was a bit of a problem, so it didn't quite work out. But I did then get something that was a just to show you, you can do a view export and export it to a 2D graphic. So I exported that down to a 2D graphic. Uh, on this peanut, that's peanut, obviously. So if I can edit that down. Sorry for the barking. Um, we have a mouse in the house. Um, I think someone wrote a book about that. All right, so what I did is went here to layer and then I imported a layer image. Okay, and I moved it around. But I also, once you import a layer image, you can then play around with the layer op opacity. And this, just like sometimes in SketchUp, we'll look at these later, this opacity thing, I'm gonna bring it all the way up. That's a lot of white, right? Well, the ability, as you shift this, if you notice in the, what the video I'm pulling, it's not showing you that its opacity is changing, but once you hit OK, it is. So that's one of the things about Smooth Draw that might throw you is you don't get that WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. All right, so that was one layer I've made, and that gives me later an ability to kind of turn on and turn off. The next layer I made is basically what I'm going to be using, you know, for, this is a, this has to do with four-dimensional math, and so I have something here, but on this layer I've made something so I can go back to the same color each time. Right. Now there might be other ways to do that in other programs, because if I want to draw in green, I can go to there and catch the green. And then finally what I've got is on layer three, and what you see as I'm clicking on those layers, the layer that is highlighted is the layer that I'm drawing on. So right now I can go to here, grab the yellow, and then, for instance, if I'm going to fill in this chart, I can say put a 5 there and a 3 and a 6 and a 7. And we'll talk about what this chart is later. And then later on, if I want to turn off the background, it looks almost like I knew what I was doing. So this is a way um, to perhaps do something that was called grid lines back in hand drafting um, and, and put these things together. Or you can leave the grid lines on or bring them up or bring them down, and you can understand that it's very often when you get into CAD work or computer work, uh, if you try to print that to your printer, it's awfully black. <laughs> but if you try to print peanut, but if you try to print this, <laughs> it's actually a lot better when you bring the white up. So <laughs> peanut, no. All right, I apologize for peanut, and I'm gonna not edit that out because that adds another layer of um, complexity to making a video. When you have to edit things out, uh, I can cut out the, the portion in YouTube, um, but basically playing around with the, the inputs and everything else, it adds a level of complexity that um, is gonna keep people from making these videos. And then, and we'll talk about perhaps later. So this is smooth draw. And so right now I'm gonna do an edit undo, but I can go ahead and like add another layer. And that lays me, you know, lets me now maybe put things, I'm going to put some things in red. And I'm going to put them now in, and what you, I have to do, unfortunately, is jump around and clear my pens, but maybe I want a 5, a 7, and a 9, and a 6 here. You're going to see the reason why I'm doing this, I'll end is why the color becomes really important, is I'm going to be tying this into 3D visualization. And... Uh, and I've got a feeler out to a guy named Herb Gross, whose stuff is so cool, adjective, noun, math, that you need to go out and look at it right now. Stop my video, go out and look at adjective, noun, math, sit and watch half an hour of his video. But I asked him this question, when was the adoption of red for the X, watch what I'm doing, grab here, the green, back to the pen, green for the Y, going here, once again going to blue, going back and forth on the pens, and blue for the Z. When was this convention adopted? And if you notice here, I can turn that on and off, or I can turn this on and off. As I put that on another layer, I can turn that on and off, I can turn that on and off, even as I'm capturing. I can also finally let you know that if I can then either merge down, I'm not gonna do that here, but I can take this layer and merge it down, so put them all together, or more likely, I might want to do something like this, export the layer. And this, again, gives you the ability to do some pretty neat stuff um, in terms of organizing. 
it puts out the whole canvas. It lets you do things for uh, transparent backgrounds, which is going to be a big deal in putting memes into Memrise, www.memrise.com. So just so you don't feel like you wasted the last 10 minutes, put that in the comments. I'm going to put two websites in on a new layer, add new layer that you should actually go out and look at. I'm going to put them in blue, and I'm going to write them out. One is www adjective noun a d adjective noun math dot com you got to look at the videos for about a half an hour to before you get it but understand that he's got it going on and he had it going on back in the 70s which is when it was really going on and the other one I'm going to tell you which is worth looking at is www.memrise dot com and out there there is a an exercise called unit circle strip down which is one I put up um, so just pushing here smooth draw and its ability to bring in backgrounds and different backgrounds and that's a shout out to I can't remember the I think it was a guy named Parker that has a video like this out there on how to make a Khan Academy type video smooth draw really cool program takes a a little bit of getting used to but once you get used to it it's uh, with a Wacom tablet you're attaching yourself to a couple of things one is the open source education movement um, the other one is Sal Khan and then open source software in general thanks for listening